Hello, welcome to another tutorial from MoICT. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to uh, make object move around on the Windows form uh, by using the keyboard. Let's get started. So first, we're going to name this project move move object in Windows form, so we can find it later on in the project. So this is a Windows form project. Let's make it slightly bigger. Uh, a couple of things we're going to need. We're going to need a picture box. I'm just going to make this one slightly bigger so I can see when it moves around. Uh, change the back color to blue so we can see on the form. Um, second thing is change the title to Object Movement Project YCT. Okay. Uh, second thing we're going to need is the time object. So the time object is what's going to move the actual picture box in the scene. So let's call this one move timer. So just change the name there. Change the interval to say 20. So we need it to fire up every 20 milliseconds. Uh, change the enable to true. And if you go to click on the little lightning arrow there, we can say move timer event. We can type that in there and then press enter. That will take us to the C sharp script and we can need to come back and we need to add two more to the actual form, not to the picture box, but to the form. So if you click on the form and let's go and add a key down and a key up event. So let's add that. So say key is down, press enter and then say key is up here. <coughs> start adding some variables to this project so first of all we're going to need two booleans so say move right move left move up and then move down so these are the four booleans that we're going to need and then we're going to need a integer speed so let's set it to 12 for now right so inside the key down event, when the keys are pressed, so we are interested in the up, down, and left, right key. So when those keys are pressed, we will check um, these boolean and then we'll set them to true. So let's say, for example, the first one is if key so left. So you can just send move left to true here, and then we'll go back here and type in if. So it's very important to make sure that you have the curly bracket. So if, if statements are only checking for what value is true in this condition, once that value is true, then it will do the following thing. So we can use if statements for many, many other things. So let's just take a look at this example and then we'll add some more to the timer. Is dot right. So there's a move right equals to true. Now we need to also check up and down the key. So. Don't do true. And then if Excellent what is going on here. So the E that we are using is from here. So this event is linked to this key event argument, and then basically that E is going to check for a corresponding event that's happening to this form. So any key that is pressed, this will trigger. And then inside of here, we need to check if the keys that we want are being pressed. So you go left, right, down, and up key, right? So the key up function is quite similar to this. So if we copy this by here, okay. And then now in the key up, when the keys are left, we need to change them to false. So just change the true for true to false for now. Okay. 
Okay, so that that would do for the key down and the key up function. All right. So now what we need to do is we are going to check if move left is true. So we can leave it the same way in this one. So in this selection, we're going to check if move left is true. So we can also say if move left is equals equals true, but we can leave it like that. But for this project, we'll use a similar fashion to that because it becomes a lot easier to read for us. So if move left is equals equals true, then we are going to move the picture box one dot left is going to be minus equals speed. Okay, so when you are moving the object all the way to the left, so basically the object starts with a zero zero position always. So if we go here, look at the location, and if we change that to a zero and a zero, you'll see that it stops right at the top there because that's where the zero zero location is. And if we add more value to it, so you'll see that it's the location then changes to. 147 so right now the left position of this object has gone to 147 pixels this way now obviously but when we want to move something to the left we are deducting from the initial location so this location right now is 335 so if you move it to say 200 it will move left so what we also need to do is we need to check if so we don't want that character to sort of go off the boundaries so what, we, what we'll do is we'll do a multiple condition inside this one so we can put a double AND sign in here and we can check if the picture box 1 left is in fact greater than 0 so it's not gone past it so as long as it's inside the form you can still move to the left but once you hit the border here we want it to stop okay All right, so now let's do the right part so when this move right is equals equals true we also want to end we want to check if it's in the right position from the right of the form so the right of the form is it gets to right there so if you look at the position of this object now we should be able to see the location x is 646 so if we say left is less than 646 so we still want it to be inside the boundary from the right okay then we can say picture box left plus equals speed so we want it to move it that way so as long as it's less than that so when it gets more than this it will stop so whenever we move the object all the way here it will stop here okay so now let's look at the up and down so if we do if Say go up, no go up, sorry, move up, move up, boolean is true, and my picture box one dot top is still greater than zero, then we can move that over. So picture box one dot top, so let's say minus equal speed. Okay. And now let's do the last one. So move down is equals equals true. And picture box one dot top. So here we need to find that the same way we find the right part, we need to find if it's still on the bottom there. So if you go back to the location there, and it's five this time the y axis is 517. So let's go to say, and if it's less than still less than 517, then we're going to say picture box one dot top is plus equals to speed, right? So whenever you want to move something towards the default location, you go minus. Whenever you move something to the other direction, you go plus. So if it's going left or up, we say minus equals to the initial space, and then if you want to move it down or right, you go to plus equals, all right? So the reason we have done this inside the timer function is because the timer fun event uh, is going to run every 20 milliseconds. So this way we have a consistent 
loop of the event running so that way whenever we press the key it will add it to the location of the left or to the top so let's start this application now and let's see how it works so here we have it and if I move it down I stop here I can't move any further down than this if I now move it up and stop there if I move it left I can't go any more and then if I go to the right I stop it there so right now we have a object that is stopped now um, there are always ways to calculate the window um, height and width as well but this has been a basic example of this kind of stuff so um, all the tutorials based on the game design and stuff like that that we've done for more ICT have been using a main timer that pretty much does all of the logic for the game there's also key down and key up function so as we are going through week to week basis um, I will be releasing new videos so hopefully you guys have a better understanding on how to make basic games in Windows form I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you on the next one